in this angular js tutorial we are going to see how to fetch data from database these are the data which is coming from the database as you, i can show you this the test is the database and the stats is the table name and this is the query that run and you can see these are the columns of the database these columns can be seen in the web page as well fine now you will get the source code in the description to follow with me I'll show you what are the files included. This is an index file, script file, and a style file, style.css, which is style sheet. And this select.php runs as a query. So, as a result of the query, the data is displayed over here. Fine. Now, let's start with the HTML. We will start the script, and that means the AngularJS script completely from scratch. We will skip the style sheet and I will explain what select.php has fine now you can see this is a minimum HTML requirement you can see there is one heading and a table included the whole div is simply the container let's ignore the container it's just for the style sheet uh, to just style I have used it now we have a container and this container acts as our angular project or you can say angular app so to define it i have used ng app and given and i have give the my app name fine now i'm using the controller ng controller the controller is because inside this div whatever is there i can access it with the help of the controller i can access it and i can update it with the help of control fine now with the help of the controller what with the help of the controller what I need to do is I'm going to display the data in the table as a row so this row would be simply the data from the database so with the help of ng repeat it will accept the array and will display once at a time sorry for that let me yeah now you can see the ng repeat is going to get repeated unless and until there is no values in the table fine now you can see each td so the first td can the first td has x dot location the location is simply the column name the second is going to be the second column name and the third is going to be the third column name which is recovered in our case so the ng repeat can be accessed and updated using the controller which is how we are going to see in now now you can see this whole app I'm going to call from the script to call it I'm going to use angular dot module and I'm going to pass the name of the app as the first argument the second argument was would simply an array in our case the app name is simply my app so with the help of the reference I'm going to call the controller function and this controller function is going to have two attributes the first one is the controller name and second one is the function what the controller need to do in our case the controller need to update this whole section let me re replace the controller name now this whole section need to be updated so for that I am going to call a function and this function I would be this time I would be using the ng init so this init will simply initialize the function display data the controller can access this display data to access the display data the controller comes with the comes with variable called scope and this HTTP would simply for the HX with the help of the scope variable we can access the function on the angular app it's simply the function let's use the function bracket now let's define a function and uh, let me show you uh, let me show you how does it works I'm going to alert and uh, this alert is going to get called when page loaded 
and when the page is loaded the app the angular app is going to get called and the angular app is going to call the controller and the controller is going to call this function with the help of scope variable let me see if you refresh it that is the process going to take place you can see page loaded and page called app app called controller and control called this function using scope variable fine and this whole select is going to return a data and data can be accessed using the HTTP variable so we are going to give the get request on select.php file and it will give the data that is the success message as a data for this function so this data can be accessed and I'm going to update it on the controller you can see this sum array is simply this one to access the sum array using the controller we can use sum array is going to get called by the controller using the scope variable now the data is simply the fetch from the database and displayed you can see there is one column completely blank that is because of the column name you can see the spelling mistake is over there confirmed fine now if you refresh it you will fetch the data now not to leave you blank I'm going to dis I'm going to discuss how the select.php works simply this is the connection for the database I'm going to connect it with the MySQL database and I have passed four parameters the first one is simply the local host or you can see you can give the IP address and the username password and then the database name I have defined the output variable so that I can use it this is a query which I have already shown you select star from table and this once this query is run you will get the result this is a this is going to run the query once the query is run you will get the result as an associative array that's why I have used I have already defined output as an array fine this associative array I'm going to convert it to a JSON object so that we can access it on the table row so this echo is simply passed to this sum array with the help of controller so if you refresh it and that's what that's how it works fine now let me show you when if you remove the echo it is not going to pass any variable so you will not get any output if you click if you write echo this will give data to the this this variable and this variable will populate some array and the controller will give the value to the sum array and this is how we can access thank you so much for listening get the source code in the description